and rolling. Alright. Rolling on Hollywood. How much time do we have? Beautiful. So, Juan. Yes, sir. What do you love about music? That's an almost famous question. Exactly. Is that what the that's the first curveball you're gonna toss me? That was the first an iconic I... line from a film by a great man named Cameron Crowe. Exactly. The, a, a postcard to those who love rock and roll, who grew up in the seventies, who were immersed and sconced in vinyl, who went home from school and did their homework and listened to their turntable until it was too late, and then your mom screamed at you. Turn it down! God damn! worked all day. But it's Todd Rundgren. I don't care. Anyway. Yeah. Music. 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 The landscape of my life. It's got to be playing. Ah! Where my soul is weighing. Heavy. I've been listening to music since... I saw the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan Show, February 9th, 1964. I like to cite that as the moment of my true birth. Even though I came into being seven years prior, that was really it. When you can recall a moment with such clarity, it, 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 it's supposed to stick with you for a reason. It's supposed to identify where your journey started. And then I didn't have any kind of a map where I was going. I just started to buy singles and vinyl and years pass and the genres change but there's something about you know those magical musicians creating things that you don't really understand but they feel good and they, and they take you places that you don't go to in your normal life if you grew up in the San Fernando Valley of Los Angeles you didn't have that exciting life you had a few friends that dug the same music as you and if you're like me somehow serendipitously it becomes your profession which is why I guess I write because there's no other way to explain this path of my life except to kind of put it down into anecdote and document hey how'd that happen oh oh you got a job at Hustler magazine you reviewed porn films and, and dildos and that somehow led to uh, music how'd that how'd that happen well Hustler Magazine had a sister publication named Chic Magazine, and, and, and I became the executive editor of Chic Magazine, and, and I said, we need a music column, so it started there. And very few years later, chain of events, cause and effect, comes Rip Magazine, a Flint publication, first non-sex title the company put together. And on one warm day, I walked in the CEO's office after doing seven years of duty in the Sophisticate mags. I said, I, I, I like this rock mag that you started, but I could, I could really take it to another place. Okay? He said, well, what do, you, what do you need? I said, well, I read really good paper. I need a budget to hire really good writers and photographers and just leave me alone. You were a really good friend with Althea Flint, who was Al big into the scene. Althea Flint was, the, was she was the, kind of like the anti-hero of the company. She, she was anti-everything, anti-establishment, but she was also the resident punk rocker. And she liked me in my mid-twenties, because I had music playing in my office. She stumbled down. And, asked me to come up to her office and listen to tunes and talk about things. And she took me to see the Cramps at the country club. I remember one night we went to see we went to see Gary Myrick and the figures. 